Captain Marvel was the long-awaited first MCU movie to feature a female superhero as the main character, and the movie did exceedingly well, earning over $1.1 billion at the box office. However, despite its success, Captain Marvel still seems to be one of the most controversial MCU movies, and the reason why have intrigued me for quite a while, which is why today we will be discussing why people hate Captain Marvel. Now, a while back I made a video on why Captain Marvel is great, and this was part of a series where I took controversial controversial movies and explained all the reasons I could come up with why people would like the movie. Now I don't think Captain Marvel is a fantastic movie, I don't even know if I personally think it's great. I mean I enjoy watching it, but the fact of the matter is that a lot of people like it. And a lot of people dislike it, which is also valid. Some people of course hate it way more than is probably necessary. And we'll get to that later, but what I want to start off by saying is that it's perfectly fine if you like this movie, or if you don't like it. Everyone has their preferences, and the fact that these preferences often are different is what makes talking about geeky things so much fun. However, some people take their dislike too far, and it can turn into hatred. And since I already have a full video dedicated to why people like or even love Captain Marvel, I thought it would only be natural to make one on why people dislike or hate Captain Marvel, especially now that the Marvels is coming out soon, and we've already begun seeing some hate towards it. Now let me start with some genuine critique of the movie that either I have or that I've seen people mention. Firstly, I think the villain is pretty lackluster. I mean, I like Jude Law, and this problem doesn't really break the movie because he's honestly not the most important part. He's not supposed to be a main focus, but rather a physical and emotional obstacle for Carol. Still, I feel like a solid and well-written villain could have stepped up the quality of this movie, and I hope that the Marvels has a really memorable villain, because believe it or not, villains are actually quite important in superhero stories, and sadly not all superhero movies put in the effort to make them memorable. Now I don't necessarily agree, but some people see Captain Marvel as a stale and boring character, whose only personality trait is being strong. It also isn't helped by a subtle and perhaps too subtle performance by Brie Larson, and I think it's fair if you don't resonate with the character. I personally quite liked her, especially when she's interacting with Earth stuff before she remembers things, but I think this is fair criticism. As for the performances, there are some definite standouts such as Ben Mendelsohn and Lashana Lynch, but other than that I think it's pretty mediocre. Some people also feel that Carol Danvers didn't really go through enough emotional turmoil, and while I personally like her arc, I do acknowledge that a lot of the obstacles and failures she has faced were in the past, and not specific events in the plot, so her moment of realization that her true strength was never her Kree powers or the Infinity Stone, but rather her unwillingness to stay down when thrown on the ground. It's not really as well earned as it could be. And Ultimately, I think Captain Marvel really just needs more screen time. She keeps having cameos, but I hope the Marvels fleshes out her character even more, and that if people give the movie a chance, then who knows, maybe the movie will make her more likable to some people. Because I do understand why a lot of people didn't relate to her as much in her solo movie, because sometimes it requires extra effort to relate to someone so powerful and almost ethereal. So yes, there definitely are things to criticize about this movie, and they're valid. However, as I've mentioned in other videos too, hate requires more more than simply not liking a movie. If a person doesn't like the villain of a movie and thinks the performances are weak or that the script is lacking, then that's perfectly fine, but it doesn't really explain hatred. And of course we all use the word hate pretty loosely. I mean yesterday I stubbed my toe and I exclaimed rather loudly that I hate everyone and everything. Obviously I didn't mean that, but still I used the word hate. So naturally people use hate for various different reasons, and it's not always the super serious emotion of extreme and intense loathing towards something. It can just be genuine dislike. However, for the sake of this video, I am being a bit more strict with how I see the word, because I genuinely believe that some people truly hate this movie, and that can't simply be explained by your typical film criticism. And I have a couple theories as to why, but you can of course leave your own thoughts down below, especially if you believe that I missed something important. However, I first and foremost think that a lot of people hated this movie for what it meant in a broader sense, not just as an isolated movie. It was the first movie in the MCU you that starred a woman instead of a man, and it was also really fucking successful, and since it came out, the MCU has had a lot more focus on female characters, both as main characters but also just as prominent roles in general. 
and I can assume that if you're not too keen on female characters having the spotlight in your superhero movies, that this could upset you. And if you indeed are one of these, let's say, insecure individuals who can't handle seeing powerful, independent, and assertive women in your action movies, then you can probably blame Captain Marvel for helping to spearhead these new trends we're seeing in more recent examples. Now naturally, whether you like this movie or not, I'm sure that you can agree if you're a level-headed person that the people who feel this way are whiny and feel some kind of threat from a film like Captain Marvel, because for your average Captain Marvel disliker, I think you simply just watch the movie, don't like it, and perhaps discuss it with some friends or make a video about it, and then you move on. Because after a certain point, why would you keep talking or thinking about something that you didn't enjoy? Unless, of course, the movie elicited such strong emotions in you that you just can't let it go. And I think these emotions of hatred are why so many people can't let this movie go. Captain Marvel symbolizes the parts of modern Hollywood that they don't like, even if they have to really reach to pretend like any so-called anti-male agenda really does exist at least to any significant degree, but in their minds it does, and Captain Marvel is a constant reminder of this fake agenda that they just can't let go of. However, I don't really think it's that much about Captain Marvel itself, so much as what it means to people, and one thing that this film definitely gave to its haters was a scapegoat to put all the blame on, Brie Larson. And we've now arrived at the main reason why I believe so many people hate Captain Marvel it's because of Brie Larson, and she has for a long time been a scapegoat for people to have someone they can blame for all the feminist agendas they see in modern Hollywood. Brie Larson isn't the only scapegoat, of course. We also have individuals like Kathleen Kennedy, but Brie Larson is probably the most prominent one. And a couple of years back, I did a video on why the internet hates her, but essentially, the evidence used to justify the hate towards Brie Larson can be boiled down to these three things. Firstly, during a speech for A Wrinkle in Time, she had this to say. So earlier this week, USC Annenberg's inclusive initiative released findings that 67% of the top critics reviewing the 100 highest grossing movies in 2017 were white males. Less than a quarter were white women and less than 10% were unrepresented men. Only 2.5% of those top critics were women of color. So you're probably thinking right now, like, wow, that super doesn't represent the country that I live in, and that's because that's true. This is a huge disconnect from the U.S. population breakdown of 30% white men, 30% white women, 20% men of color, and 20% women of color. So why does that matter? Why am I up here giving you statistics? On top of all of this, am I saying that I hate white dudes no, I'm not. But what I am saying is, is that if you make a movie that is a love letter to women of color, there is an insanely low chance a woman of color will have the chance to see your movie and review your movie. And this is also not to mention other people besides white dudes, like Star Wars, and would love the opportunity to do a set visit. And I'm also saying, I don't hate white dudes, I'm just saying we need to be conscious of our bias and do our part to make sure that everyone is in the room. And this clip was used as evidence of her anti-white male agenda, which in many ways kickstarted the hate train towards both her and Captain Marvel. But there was also her many interviews with cast members of Avengers Endgame in which body language experts and psychology analysts were used to paint her out as some egotistical and cocky person who thought she was better than everyone else. To put it mildly, these videos were abundant. And lastly, she doesn't smile in a couple of posters. How could she? Now, I can decide to be incredibly uncharitable and assume all the worst about her. She is a horrible cast member. She was genuinely saying that she didn't care about the opinions of white men. And she is, in fact, the most unlikable person in the world. Even then, I still can't excuse the hate and vitriol she's received for years, because she's definitely not the only person who has said or done these things, but she is the only one that even after years still gets hate videos, social media posts, and hate comments made about her every time she says or does anything in public. However, this discussion is pointless because you can't be that charitable towards the hate because it's simply not true. People read too far into those interviews, and even if she is a little bit arrogant or pretends to do things that she hasn't, the speech also did not say that white men are bad or that they should be kicked out of being film critics, but rather that there should be more focus on uplifting women and people of color within 
the film industry, especially when it comes to a movie like A Wrinkle in Time, which despite the quality of the movie you can say whatever you want, but it is a love letter to young women of color. That doesn't mean that men can't watch it or review it, but rather that for a movie being about a woman of color, it would be nice if white men weren't the only people watching and reviewing it. Now, she could have formulated things a lot better and made it 100% clear what she meant. I mean, she's pointing out that there's underrepresentation in film criticism, which is a useful fact and issue to be aware of. The notion that one's ethnicity or culture has no bearing over our experience of art is nonsense. If a film depicts the difficult realities experienced by a certain demographic, then a critic who falls into that demographic is uniquely equipped to experience the film more fully, and in my view, better equipped to evaluate and critique it. For example, Coco is a film that many people love, regardless of one's background, but the nuanced family dynamics has the potential to not really communicate well to a non-Mexican audience. These subtleties in the movie are a love letter to the ethnic group the film portrays and to some degree represents. Resonating with these cultural nuances and the emotions that come along with them are exclusive to that group. How can a critic who isn't part of that group tap into these components and review them? There is no moral reason why one shouldn't, but criticism from this hypothetical person would be limited as they would probably fail to appreciate and examine the cultural subtleties that do not speak to them. To have useful and effective criticism of films portraying cultural nuances of a particular other requires a member of that group should we desire this more full critique. This is what her argument amounts to. If we want a more full critique that taps into the nuances of a particular other, then we need a member of that group who understands them to examine the film. This is especially important to point out since people from minority groups aren't represented very well within the film industry. Industry, as Brie Larson points out. And this doesn't mean that a white dude can't critique A Wrinkle in Time or Coco in a meaningful and useful way, but it simply means that this person likely won't have the cultural understanding to fully appreciate the nuances and emotions it evokes. That's it, that's the argument here, and perhaps Brie Larson didn't formulate this very well. I mean, it was on a stage after she just won an award. She does mention herself that she is a bit flustered, so her speech could have been formulated better, sure. But even if you understand what she was saying and still disagree, which I guess is fine, how could you possibly justify her being the target for literal years of having everything about her be criticized by people who are either just doing it for views, like Geeks and Gamers has admitted? Um, so here's the deal. Brie Larson videos right now are algorithm gold on YouTube. Or from people who genuinely think she's the crux of the problem within modern Hollywood. That she's some leader of the woke mob. You also just know that all these people think that she's really hot, and that really confuses them. So, like any infant-brained man-baby, they act the way they always do towards an attractive woman, by bullying her. Ah yes, right back to kindergarten. But seriously, I genuinely can't wrap my head around why so many people are just alright with the way she's been treated. Treated. Even if you don't really like her, how can you justify this? Anytime she says anything in an interview, you can expect multiple videos from multiple channels to call her out for whatever they think they're mad at her for. It sucks because we know that these channels make all these videos about her because they know she generates them a lot of clicks. But the reason for that is because their audiences want to see it. They want more of these negative Brie Larson videos so that they can be affirmed in their hatred. Not of Brie Larson herself, of course, but of feminism and just prominent women in general, because that's what they're afraid of women. And Brie Larson is the perfect scapegoat to harass, belittle, and basically cyber bully, because they pretend that they have any justification to do so based on these incidents that I mentioned earlier. But nothing that anyone uses to justify the insane amount of hate that Brie Larson gets is valid in any way. Because I don't care if you don't like her or that you think she's arrogant or cocky based on some interviews, or if you think she said something dumb during a speech, I've still never heard a single argument that comes even close to justifying all this hate. And go ahead and try to prove me wrong, break that record, because anyone who has even a shred of decency or just basic understanding of anything will tell you the same thing. Brie Larson does not deserve the hate she gets. You don't have to like her, you can disagree with the things she says, but nothing she has done 
is bad enough to warrant the hate. So yes, I do believe that Brie Larson is the main reason people hate Captain Marvel. There are other things such as it being the first female main character in an MCU movie, but that's just equally invalid. The thing is, there are plenty of reasons as to not like Captain Marvel, and it's fine if you don't. It's also fine if you like the movie, because there are plenty of reasons why someone would. However, even if you think that this film is the worst MCU movie, I still just don't buy that the people who genuinely hate it hate it for real and valid reasons. But maybe I'm wrong, and perhaps you can prove that I'm wrong down in the comments. Thank you as always to my supporters, including Ben Joseph and Nicholas. You can support me further too over on Patreon or in my channel memberships. But for now, I wish you all a wonderful day, stay safe, and peace out.